Imagine that I brought a dandelion in, you know, a, kind of a, a withered dandelion. You know how they get when they're yellow, but then they stop being yellow and they turn into... Do they have dandelions down here? No, they, they, you mean when they're seeding, right? Yeah, when they seed. Is there dandelions down here? No. Is this yet another uh, botanical illustration which comes to utmost failure because no one knows what it is because they ain't from here? You can describe it very... You know, it's easy to describe. Well, a dandelion is this yellow flower, and it goes to seed, and the seeds are like little parachutes almost. Yeah. And you wave them, and dandelions go everywhere, and little kids love it, and their moms hate it, because then you get dandelions all through the yard. Well, you take a dandelion, and that flower, it's kind of pretty and white little seeds on it. You shake it or blow on it, and you destroy the thing. But what really happens is you spread the seeds of the dandelion everywhere. In the same manner, it looked like the church of Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. But what really happened is the gospel got spread Amen. all over the place. This was God's plan. On the surface, it may have looked bad. In depth, really, it was a very good thing. The result of the persecution, the gospel, is spread abroad. Jot down next to that, capital letter D, number 4, uh, Rome, uh, not Romans, chapter 8, Acts 8, verse 4. Well, we see kind of a uh, change here in geography. Roman numeral 3, the gospel to Judea and Samaria. This is going to be Romans chapter 8, verse 5, Acts chapter 8, verse 5, through Acts chapter 12. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did down to verse 8 and there was great joy in that city a little while later Peter will come and, and uh, John also and there'll be a revival all throughout Samaria after this Philip is going to be led of the Holy Spirit into the desert and he's going to meet the uh, Ethiopian treasurer and uh, he's going to preach the gospel to him the Ethiopian treasurer very interesting I find this a very interesting passage he is a man from Ethiopia, but he's coming on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and he's reading the Bible, Isaiah chapter 53, and he's trying to figure out what it's talking about. And God leads Philip to him. When a person seeks after God, God will bring someone to them to tell Amen. them how to get saved. Yeah. Well, the result is the gospel goes to Ethiopia. We see in chapter 9, verses 1 through 31, Paul gets saved. He's called Saul at this point. Later he'll be called Paul. Throughout the Bible, when you have a character who has two names, follow what happens with those two names. It's not always exactly a hard and fast rule, but in, notice, Abram becomes Abraham, Jacob becomes Israel. Well, you see, Saul becomes Paul. Saul, the, the uh, destroyer, becomes Paul, which I think basically means a small <coughs> one. Well, it's very interesting to follow when the, someone's name is changed throughout the Bible. Paul, Saul, is on the road to Damascus and he's fixing to go persecute the church in Damascus too. And uh, God meets him, confronts him on the road to Damascus, and uh, Paul surrenders. He gives up fighting God, he gets saved. And uh, we see that very immediately here he starts preaching. And um, it says in verse 20, chapter 9, verse 20, straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Well, they conspire to kill Saul. The brethren carry Saul off to Tarsus. <clears throat> Later, Barnabas will come to Tarsus to bring Paul back. Barnabas has an extremely important ministry. We will find in the book of Acts. If it were not for Barnabas' ministry, the Apostle Paul would have perhaps remained in Tarsus unproductive and relatively unfruitful. 
we'll look briefly at uh, Barnabas next week, and uh, the, there's a number of interesting threads you can follow through the book of Acts. The ministry of Barnabas is one of them. We'll look at it briefly. It's not a major thing, but it's an important theme inside the book of Acts. Well, we see a third progress report. It says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. Out of this persecution becomes a great revival, and out of this all comes rest, and the churches are multiplied. Well, we see here another change. Another, uh, the focus broadens. The beginning of the gospel to the Gentiles. The gospel has gone forth to Jerusalem, to Judea, and to Samaria, and now we see it starting to go forth to Gentiles. We see Peter goes to Joppa. Where's Joppa? Who else went to Joppa? Jonah. Jonah. Jo Joppa is kind of up on the sea coast. It's uh, it's Mediterranean pretty far north. north. Yeah, it's Mediterranean Sea coast. It's pretty far north of Jerusalem and much west. And uh, Joppa at this point in time would have been a Hellenistic Greek city. Someone tell me, or, or a Hellenistic Jewish city. What is a Hellenistic Jewish city? What, what's that talking about? It means it's Greek? Yes, they've been Greeked, basically. They are more or less, they're Jewish in ethnicity, but they have, from the uh, conquest of Alexander, adopted many of the Greek ways. They've, unfortunately, a number of them also adopted the Greek uh, pagan religions, but for the most part, what they retained kind of an outward appearance of being Jews, but in many ways, their culture was very much so kind of Greek. They, uh, they were, well, people who really were lost and needed Christ, just like everybody else. They uh, would have been considered theologically very liberal of their day. Well, Peter goes to Joppa, and... Uh, he has a ministry there. A woman named Dorcas, who's a very kind woman, Dorcas is a Greek name, by the way, is, dies and uh, is healed miraculously by Peter. Many people are saved. While Peter stays there in the house of one Simon the Tanner, a vision is sent to a centurion about that he needs to go uh, to Peter. He needs to send someone to bring Peter to tell him the way to heaven. Another interesting side point. Centurions are mentioned, I believe, eight times in the Bible. Centurions are always mentioned in a very positive light in the scriptures. Just an extra. Centurions are great. Um, I like Roman history and such. Well, the centurion calls for Peter, according to the heavenly vision. Peter comes to his house. What's wrong with this? Well, because he's a Jew going to a Gentile's house. Mm -hmm. Would this have been well accepted by the brethren? Nope. nope. Not <coughs> one bit. Peter wisely takes some of his fellow brethren with him. He goes there, and uh, the Romans get saved. They get saved. The power of the Holy Ghost comes upon them. And, uh, well, the brethren in Jerusalem hear about this. They hear that Peter went to a Gentile's house. To us, this seems like, wow, they were snobs. Understand to them that they understood purity. They understood the godly must not defile themselves with the ungodly. They had more than a thousand years of Jewish teaching and culture behind them enforcing the need for separation from that which is defiling. And Peter goes and violates very majorly, of course by the direction of God, all this thousands of years of teaching. This is a big thing here. This is major, the gospel going to the Gentiles. This is a huge thing. Did Gentiles get saved in the Old Testament? Yes. Sure they did. Case in point, Jonah and Nineveh. Sure, Gentiles would get saved. And there were many Gentiles who would become uh, proselytes, is what they were called. People who uh, followed after the Jewish ways, and there's provisions for them in the law and such. Well, this is a huge thing.